Wanderer, traveler, please, it's barely above freezing. Where could you possibly be headed this late? That's... that's at least a day's ride away, and you're on foot. A little thing like you shouldn't be subjected to these elements. Please, please come here. Stay in my manor for the night. After a hot meal and a rest, I'll have a carriage you can ride to town. Thank you. I would hate to know a pretty little thing like you froze to death when it's so warm inside. Come in. I'll have my head maid serve you tonight. Anything you need is just a call away. We were having a roast tonight. Does that uh, sound all right to you, dear? Delightful. I'll go freshen up for dinner. Katerina will escort you to the dining room. Delicious roast, wasn't it? It was farmed right here. And all of this meal came from my little manor straight to you. We grow a few crops here and there, and even ferment our own wine. I love it because it means I don't have to send anyone to market. The nearest town is still a few hours away, after all. Are you from close by, or have you been trekking for some time now? Ah, so you're not from Chakitsa? It's the village down in the valley. It looks so beautiful at night. You can see the warm glow from our watchtower. Would you like to see it? This way then, sweetie. <laughs> we'll walk through my garden on the way there. I love strolling through it at night. The moonlight really highlights the beauty of everything inside. I was in my garden when I heard you on the road. You were positively trudging, my dear. How long had you been walking for? Oh, you must be positively exhausted. A sweet traveler like you shouldn't be on their feet for that long. Dear, it's not fine. I shouldn't even have you out strolling through my garden. Here, lean on me, sweetness. I'm stronger than I look. I'll be fine. Oh, sweetie, you're trembling. Are you going to be okay? Hmm. I suppose you seem healthy enough. Your physique is certainly well, but do you feel all right? Woozy, as in sleepy, or do we need to call the medic? Hmm. If you say you're fine, I'll trust you. You know, it's probably just the valerian we have growing here. The pollen is a mild sedative, but I keep them because I love seeing that light pink in the moonlight. Once we're out of the garden, I'm sure you'll wake right up. I happened to notice you've already gotten cold. You may have an iron deficiency, or be a bit anemic. You should have that checked, should you ever find a knowledgeable doctor. If you want, I can carry you up the tower. That way you can stay warm against me. Really, honestly, I must insist. You're still wearing those southerner clothes. It's too cold for you to walk. If I carry you, you can keep all of your limbs together. It'll help your blood circulate. I promise it will help 
make you feel better. Oh, delightful. Just wrap your arms around my neck and I'll carry you up like a bride. There we go. I told you I'm stronger than I look, dear. And you look even cuter like this. Oh, you're blushing. Has no one ever carried you like this before? And that just made you blush more. Your face is as pink as my valerian. I wonder if the moonlight would enhance your beauty too. And here we are. The top of my little tower. The west window looks out on the forest, but Chiquitza is to the east, over here. Uh, the villagers down there can't afford whale oil, so they light up the town with a bonfire. It bathes the entire village in that amazing orange glow. Do you like the view? Oh, too stunned to speak. I know it's glorious, but I thought you'd be immune. After all, it pales in comparison to you. And I was right. The moonlight does make that little blush perfect. I could look at those sleepy eyes all night. Hmm. But you clearly need your rest. I'll carry you to your room. Don't worry about a thing. <laughs> and there you go, little one. All tucked in and warm. I'll have Katerina fetch you something to drink. In the meantime, May I tell you a story? Good. A long time ago, but very close to here, there lived a man. More accurately, there lived a count. Since he was a shell of the man he once was, he did nasty things to the people closest to him even killing his betrothed, Lucy. Fortunately for the world, his past sins caught up with him. Some of his old friends killed him. But that isn't the story I wish to tell you of. My story has a happy ending. When that count died, his possessions were given away to the people he had tormented. A sort of retribution. Amongst those things was the journal in which he kept his most sinister inner thoughts. The count had kept a secret throughout his long life. Supposedly, he understood a path to immortality. Of course, we both know that his longevity didn't exactly pan out, but his method was solid. Ah, Katerina, you brought the tea for our guest. You must be thirsty after all that walking. If you need more, just call Katerina, and she'll bring it. Anyway, my story. The Count thought that drinking the blood of other humans would allow him to take the life they were meant to live. He actually killed Lucy to drink her blood. Of course, that cannibalism brought him nothing but a blackened soul. But a single shred of genius existed in his plan. The blood of another healthy person is rich in specific vitamins. If one wanted to live a long, 
more to life, they could easily supplement their health by taking small, purified doses from willing participants. That's actually why some of the cups here are stained pink. A little gross, I know, but scientifically, it is quite marvelous. Don't worry. As you can see, your glass is still crystal clear. I know not everyone would be okay with participating in my eccentricities. I tell you this story because some of the people down in Chiquitza have some terrible rumors about me. They seem to think I'm a vampire, and no matter how many times I stroll in sunlight or bathe in holy water, their superstition holds strong. I thought maybe you had heard something negative about me while you were traveling. I'm sorry, I know. I'm starting to tear up. I shouldn't let whispered rumors get to me like this, but it still hurts. When I saw you on the road, I didn't just take you in because you were cold. Even the many servants of this manor are afraid of me. Only my closest friends, like Katerina, are sure that I'm just a mortal woman. I had hoped that if I took you in from the, the road and showed you how nice I could be, that you wouldn't hate me as they do. I've been very lonely here. The servants may keep me company, but... They still work for me. If I was destitute, I know they would leave me, and I'm too scared to try and find out. Every other passerby runs when they see me. I suppose they already heard the stories. But not you. I hoped that you would stay here for longer than just the night. I admit I find myself quite attached to you already. I'm sorry, you must be exhausted. The tea is quite relaxing, and you've already drank all of it. You don't have to respond now, and if you wish to leave in the morning, that will be perfectly fine. Just. Close your eyes and sleep. What's wrong, dear? I said you could sleep on it. Just roll over and get comfortable. Oh, good. Ilona got the distillation right. <laughs> Uh, what's wrong, my sweet? Are you finding that you can't move? <laughs> uh, I admit, I told a few falsehoods during your time here. Firstly, I don't just keep my garden tidy and neat for no reason. The valerian's pollen may make you sleepy, but you can infuse the root with chai tea to make a tasteless yet quite paralytic poison. Secondly, the rumors spread by the nearby villages aren't completely baseless. People who wander into my castle do tend to disappear. Vampires aren't real, 
but death is, and I have no intent on meeting any form of death anytime soon. Thirdly, <laughs> the donors I find are rarely willing to be bled, and I never take just a little. I would keep them alive, but the cleansing process is understandably quite lethal, and it must be performed on the heart itself, not just extracted blood. Mm, shh, don't try to fight it. The quilts keeping you warm are plenty enough to hold you down. Plus, your struggling just makes your heart pump quicker, which in turn spritz the root faster. The amount you drank will keep you nice and docile throughout the procedure. I promise it won't hurt too much. And as it goes on, you'll notice it less and less. You really are a beautiful specimen. So, we will bury you with honor. A named tombstone in my graveyard. Of course, you'll be listed as a servant. And <clears throat> the cause of death won't be clear. But your family may find you yet. Don't fret, my sweet thing. Your death will help me greatly. With proper rationing, you'll keep me going for decades. I'll visit your grave weekly, as I do with all my sacrifices. And you can die knowing you kept the Bathory legacy alive. 